There's a common myth out there that a 24 millimeter lens has less compression than a 70 millimeter lens. Like people want longer lenses because they have better compression. And really, it has everything to do with the distance of the camera to the subject. And what I'm talking about when I'm talking about compression, I'm talking about the appearance of how big the background is to the foreground. It's actually exactly the same between these two images. So I'm gonna show you how you can use a little bit of simple math here in DaVinci Resolve Fusion and a transform tool to match them up, which is gonna help you with compositing. So you can take any image, background, foreground, and get them in the right ballpark pretty quickly. So to match a 24 millimeter plate to a 70 millimeter plate, all you gotta do is some math. We're gonna divide one by the other, and it just depends if you need to scale it up or down. But the cool thing about Fusion and DaVinci Resolve, when you add a transform, let's do XF to add a transform, it accepts these decimal point values so you can get really accurate results. So to get this 24 millimeter, which is right here, loaded in my B buffer, get that scaled up, let's get the transform over there, uh, we just enter that value. So 70 divided by 24 is 2.91666, and we're gonna be 2.91666. And what that's just done is it's made the exact same size so that these two can be composited together in any way. So you can see how this would work with any sort of background as long as you can get that metadata information of what the, the focal length is and you do that division, you're gonna be in a great starting point so that things will match. Now, if you wanna compare this side by side with the 70 millimeter, sure, I can flick it up there in the B buffer, but even better, we have this little split here. So if I load my A buffer and I put the 70 millimeter in there and then look at this, we also have buffer sp split, or wipe, whatever you want to call it. We can compare these very closely with each other. Um, it's also the, the button that's right next to shift on the keyboard. So you can kind of compare the two. And look, the compression is actually exactly the same between them because the camera's in the same position to the subject. So now you know it has nothing, to, you don't have to go get a fancy long lens to get more compression. Now there's obviously other reasons you get a long lens, it's nice, um, but um, you know, basically this lets us line up different plates together really easily. And this works in the other direction as well. So let's do that next. I'm gonna just go back to my A buffer only. And so let's say this transform, we wanna take the, the wide angle is gonna be our main plate. Well, you just divided the other way around. So we have 24 millimeters divided by 70 millimeters gives you 0.3429. Let's change this value here, 0.3429, very precise number. And we'll attach the 70 millimeter shot into the transform. And what that's done is it's pulled it out to the exact uh, value that should match these two. So we're looking at the A buffer now. Let's switch to the B buffer, doing that with the period, and let's load the 24 millimeter shot in there. And we're using the slash key to compare the two. I'm zooming in here. And now we've basically taken the 70 millimeter shot, scaled it down. <laughs> I'm having issues with my, uh, my, my hands today. And uh, those match as well. So you can obviously you can scale down, scale up. Um, in this instance, yeah, you, you see less of the noise and stuff if you're scaling down, but it all depends on your final result. This is how you match two different plates that are shot with different focal lengths. So if you can find that metadata somewhere in the file, that's really helpful. Now, the one other thing I do need to point out and is worth knowing is if the cameras are shot from with a different sensor size, there's a, a little bit of other math that you need to be aware of because you need to account for different sensor size in combination with the focal length. And I've pasted that right here. Uh, I don't wanna make this tutorial go on too long because no one likes long tutorials, but you basically are accounting for the difference in sensor size in millimeters um, along with the focal length so that you can get the correct transform. But that's all you gotta do.